Hi, I'm Sergey, and I'm happy to present our work with Professor Alex Birkov and Gleb Nomenko on probing of parallel channels in the Lightning Network. Lightning Network is a network of payment channels. A payment channel is a two-party cryptographic protocol for fast Bitcoin payments. It can be visualized as beads on a string. If Alice and Bob want to uh, exchange Bitcoins quickly between themselves, they lock some coins into the channel, and the total number of coins that they lock is called the capacity of the channel. The number of coins that Alice and Bob currently have is called their respective balances. We will refer to a pair of adjacent nodes like Alice and Bob and all channels between them as a hop. And here is how a simple payment works. One coin just moves from Alice to Bob. Now Alice does not have to establish a channel to Charlie if she wants to send a payment to him. Instead, she may choose a multi-hop path through Bob to Charlie. Here's how it works. Alice forwards a coin to Bob, Bob forwards a coin to Charlie. Then Charlie uses the payment secret to redeem the coin from Bob, and Bob can use the same secret to atomically redeem the coin from Alice. So one coin has effectively moved from Alice through Bob to Charlie. The problem with this approach is that Alice doesn't know in advance whether Bob has sufficient balance in his channel to Charlie. For example, if Alice tries to repeat the payment, the payment will fail because Bob has no more coins on his side in the channel to Charlie. Therefore, lightning payments operate in a trial and error fashion. Alice may try multiple payment paths until one of them succeeds. And this is what the probing attack exploits. Now we have the prober who wants to learn how many coins Alice has in her channel to Bob. In order to do so, the prober sends a fake payment, which is called a probe, through Alice to Bob. Alice forwards the probe, but Bob rejects it because uh, the payment is fake. Bob doesn't know the pre-image of this payment hash. And Alice returns the probe to the prober, but the prober now learns that Alice's balance is at least one coin because she was able to forward this payment to Bob. Now, if the prober tries to forward two coins, then Alice rejects this payment because she only has one coin, and the prober therefore learns that Alice has less than two coins in her channel to Bob. This is the essence of the probing attack, and we can visualize it as follows. So we have the white interval that depicts all the positions of possible balance in the channel, and the green interval depicts all the positions of the balance according to the attacker's current knowledge. So the attacker can do a series of probes with amounts A1, A2, A3, and so on, and divide the colored interval in half every time, and using this binary search, um, bring the two estimates, BL and BU, of the true balance closer and closer to the true balance position, which is depicted here by the star. The question that our work is focused on is what happens if Alice and Bob share multiple channels? Such channels are called parallel, so what happens in the context of probing here? If the prober sends a probe through parallel channels, Alice, in this example, is free to choose any of the two channels to forward a probe to Bob. So the probe goes to Alice, then she forwards it to Bob, Bob rejects the probe, and Alice returns the coin to the prober. The problem for the prober is that it is unclear which channel was involved in this, in this operation and which estimate the prober should update. So we need a new model to reflect what information does the prober actually uh, receive in this scenario. So we suggest using a geometrical model. In this example, consider a two-channel hop with equal capacities equal to C. It corresponds to a square on a plane, and each point within the square corresponds to a possible position of the, uh, of the two balances. So if the true balances in these channels are B1 for the first channel and B2 for the second channel, then we can depict, again with a star, the position of the true balance that the attacker wants to learn as precisely as possible. So how does the attacker do that? So consider first the picture on the left. The attacker sends a probe with the amount A1, and this probe fails, which means that Alice was unable to forward the probe to Bob. This means that the balances in all the channels between Alice and Bob on the Alice's side were lower than the probe amount. Geometrically, this corresponds to the situation where the true balance point lies somewhere within a smaller square that is being cut from the lower left corner of the bigger square that depicts the whole hop. So now the attacker shrinks this colored area from the whole square to the smaller square. Then the attacker makes the second probe 
depicted on the right with the mount A2, and this probe now succeeds, meaning that there is at least one channel between Alice and Bob with sufficient balance to forward this probe, which means geometrically that the balance point is somewhere outside of the smaller white square, again, again cut from the lower left corner of the bigger square. So what the attacker really learns is not the information about individual balances, but in the multi-channel hop case, how much a hop can forward in both directions. We refer to these two key parameters of a hop as H and G. H is the maximum of the balances from one side, how much a hop can forward from one side, and G is the analogous uh, metric from the opposite direction. This figure shows um, what information the attacker has somewhere in the middle of the probe. So the attacker has done a few probes from both directions and has established both the lower bounds and the upper bounds for these two parameters, H and G. HL and HU are the bounds that determine the attacker's knowledge about the value H, and geometrically they correspond to what we call an L-shape um, looking north east and analogously the probes from the opposite direction determine the bounds gl and gu for the true value g and geometrically they correspond to another l shape which is looking southwest so to say and the intersection of these two figures uh, depicted here as colored in green depicts the attacker's true knowledge so all the points where as per the attacker's knowledge the true balance may be the first of our contributions here is the following. We suggest using an optimized amount selection algorithm, namely to choose the next probe amount A in such a way that it cuts the area of the colored uh, figure in half. Therefore, we generalize the binary search pattern for the n-dimensional space, which makes probing more efficient. Now, the key question that we ask ourselves is, given enough probes, can the attacker learn the balances precisely for any hop with any number of channels? So the answer is actually no, and let me show you why in a three-dimensional example. Imagine now we have a hop with three channels with equal capacities equal to C, and the attacker has done some probes in one of the directions and has established the lower bound HL that corresponds to the smaller purple uh, cube, and the upper bound HU corresponds to the larger orange cube. And the attacker knows that the true balance point is somewhere between these two surfaces. Now, what happens when these two surfaces merge into one as the attacker uh, gets them closer and closer together? So ultimately, the attacker knows exactly um, how much hop can forward, the value H, which correspond to this, um, to this surface composed of three perpendicular squares. The attacker knows that the true balance is somewhere on this green surface. Now let's consider what happens analogously when the attacker probes from the opposite direction, and this is depicted on the left figure here. So we have the green surface that corresponds to probes from one direction and the precise knowledge of H, and a symmetric figure from the opposite direction is the blue surface, and these two uh, two-dimensional figures intersect along the red figure that we may call a snake. It is composed of six perpendicular red intervals, and the key insight here is that the attacker cannot do any more probes that would make the estimations more precise. The attacker only knows that the true balance lies somewhere on this red snake, but doesn't know exactly where. Contrast this to the two-dimensional case on the right, where we had just lines, L-shaped lines, that intersect at precisely two points that uh, depict the exact knowledge of the two balances up to the permutation. This is the challenge in probing multidimensional hops with three channels or more. And this is where our second contribution comes in. We suggest solving this problem for the attacker by using jamming and combining jamming with probing. Jamming is a type of denial of service attack on Lightning that works as follows. The attacker initiates a circular payment to itself or to another node that it controls, but fails to finalize the payment. As a result, the liquidity along the path remains locked until the payment is resolved. As you may have noticed, the hop between Alice and Bob has essentially become single-dimensional, and now the prober can probe it as usual as if it contained just a single channel. 
and then repeat the process for all other channels in the multi-channel hop. Geometrically, this looks as follows. So instead of cutting the cubes from the larger cube, the attacker first learns precisely the value B1, the balance of the first channel, which corresponds to the green plane. Then it learns the value B2 corresponding to the blue plane, and finally the value B3 corresponding to the yellow plane. And these three planes, of course, geometrically intersect at precisely one point, which corresponds to the exact position of the balance. Now, we test the performance of our method compared to uh, prior probing methods in our own lightning probing simulator written in Python, which is open source, and uh, based on the real-world snapshot of the lightning network populated with randomly generated balances. We measure two key parameters, the information gain, how much information can the attacker ultimately learn uh, as the final result of the probing, and the probing speed, how many bits per message sent does the attacker learn. In terms of information gain, we uh, confirm our intuition that jamming actually helps probe more efficiently. On the left uh, picture, we see that without the jamming, as we increase the number of channels in the target hops, the efficiency of probing, or rather the ultimate information gain, decreases. So the attacker doesn't um, get as much information in multi-channel hops as in uh, single-channel hops. In contrast, with jamming enhanced probing, the final information gain remains high as we increase the number of channels in the target hop. Now, if we look into the probing speed, I don't have time here to explain why we have so many lines on this graph, but basically we confirm that our optimized amount selection algorithm, all else being equal, actually does perform better compared to the non-optimized amount selection method. So in summary, we have shown that jamming helps the attacker increase the information gain, get more information about channel balances in the Lightning Network, um, and the optimized amount selection allows the attacker to do that faster. So with that, thank you for your attention. Please refer to the full paper. Please uh, contact me for any questions or comments, and I would be happy if you join Lightning and Bitcoin development space and help us make these technologies better and more secure.